I'm Krishna. I'm having 10 years of industrial experience working for a global MNCs as a lead cloud engineer and database architect. Also, I'm having a four years of experience in a corporate training. Hello, everyone. Welcome to KSR Data Vision Snowflake live demo program today. I thank everyone here who joined today for this Snowflake demo program. And today we are going to discuss on Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse and the KSR Data Vision is going to start a Snowflake course and we will be discussing on the details uh, and uh, you know providing more detailed information why we need a Snowflake and what is the benefits of uh, you know, learning a snowflake here. So let's move on to the first slide. So before, let's understand, we all call it a snowflake as a, you know, cloud data warehouse, right? So what is cloud before we going into, a, you know, understanding what is data warehouse and a cloud data warehouse, okay? So before uh, we start with the content, right, I would like to share uh, a bit about my experience in the uh, you know, past few years, as I said, I have a 10 years of experience in this industrial area where we have um, you know, gone through a lot of journey with a lot of other databases and data warehouses as well. So um, in early, early 20s, right? So I remember my first working with Oracle. Okay, it's a relational database, right? Where we were loading a data and creating a formatted tables on it. Okay. The concept was it's like a data service was providing by Oracle. And uh, where we used to query using a SQL databases, SQL queries. So SQL queries, we thought that time it was a game changer for everyone, right? So you query and you could see the uh, you know, the data details you want to understand for that particular time. So we thought we were literally surprised to seeing that results, right? So there was in eventually what happened, right? Relation databases began to struggle with the size and complexity because it's an on-prem. Right. For more analytic, analytical workloads where you want to perform analytical workloads, you need to have a lot of data, a lot of history data. Example, any company they want to run, they want to have a lot of stats to promote their business or to gain the customers, or to provide a better service to the customers. Right. So they want to run a lot of analytical workloads there. Right. So that's where we saw there is an MPP came into a scene. So what is MPP is nothing but a massive parallel processing you know, compute resources, right? So we, uh, there were some on-prem right now, also there is some on-prem uh, tools which are running on MPP um, example, like Teradata, Netiza, and in later version, we have seen something called as a green plum, Vertica also was there, right? Those are all the next generation, we call it, right? So after the Oracle where analytical workloads has been grown up uh, eventually. Right. I, I remember still in 2015, right, I'm, I was a little lucky. I could say that I can still witness that there is a lot of change happened in the data management. Um, you know, a, a example like an open source um, Hadoop, right? Hadoop actually created a revolution in the data warehouse management, or data management we can call. So they brought up a new uh, terminology called as a data lake. So it it sounds like a, it sounded like a you know very good herd, and then uh, you know people started thinking that all the problems are going to resolve with the data lake, right? L data lake is literally kind of like you don't need to do any kind of data massaging. Whatever the data you get from the sources, right? Multiple sources. It could be from a, a vehicle. It could be from industries. It could be from a hospital. Anywhere. Whatever the data, you don't need to do any extra extra kind of uh, you know massaging or transformations on the data. All they used to do in the Hadoop is uh, they put the raw data. So you are saving a lot of money over there, transforming into a different shape. So what you do is you just put your raw data and you will start parsing, writing a SQLs to extract the data. That's where the Hadoop has actually provided you know, the capacity, the storage and the process, right? Process with a great agility and a sustainability at a minimum cost. And we thought that you know that's going to resolve all our data warehouses. But eventually, even Hadoop was being not sustainable and uh, you know not sufficient for the data which is getting generated in the current world, right? Every moment. So let's try to understand here. Uh, you know, if there is a company example, let's take a Netflix or, or let's take a Facebook, right? So what happens? So you post something, or you like someone, or uh, you like some post in the one, and you like some video on that, or uh, you started some group. So every bit of information, every bit of movement is getting captured. So that is getting captured 
or to finally where it will go it will go into your data warehouses so based on that data they will able to understand customer behavior so that they can produce a you know kind of we all know that facebook right whenever you scroll down you search on something um, you know the relevant kind of advertisement start popping up on your screens right so that's where the really uh, the data analytics or the data machine learning or the ai artificial intelligence starts working on the data so data whatever you it's kind of like now the world is changed to you move we capture you watch we capture right so you do anything okay so uh, in future what is happens is you talk to someone you you watch anything we will capture it on how much time you are going to watch we capture it based on that we will roll out an offers to you so that something is like we are we are the data generators right so we there is a lot of data generating petabytes of data generating in day to day and hourly basis also we can call it as a minutes also it's going to be rapidly increasing in the future so we have to come up with some solution to resolve all these kinds of issues right so i am proudly say that we are now witnessing a third way of innovation in data warehousing technologies right so it's more of like a cloud data warehouses what is cloud data warehouse right so cloud data warehouse is is the data warehouse or a database delivered on a public clouds okay so and it's a fully managed service so where you don't need to really install something or have in hardware and put your one team to monitor it optimize it so there is nothing you need to do that way so everything is on cloud and cloud service providers will manage all the data for you okay and majorly this cloud computing will be used for all the analytics okay um, they want to run some kpis or reports they want to run and uh, they want to share it with uh, you know bigger forum where they can start the analytics and roll out the campaigns right so there is a lot of analytics can be used our scale right scale is a one major um, you know evolution we can say from on premise to cloud so what happens is when we were into an on premise um, the, the data is increasing day to day and what happens is company has to regressively plan their you know increasing increasing the data servers so that's going to take a lot of time and lot of teams resources are also going to waste right cloud came up with a solution saying that it can scale in a minutes or it can scale in a seconds all it needs is a, a very minimal set from your side it's everything over on the internet there is nothing called as an on premise for you okay so cloud is easy to scale and easy to use as well okay so that's very bit about my experience from the data warehouse um, and i hope it made little sense to you let's move on to the slide here so let's understand what is cloud computing so whatever as i mentioned a few points here here also you know the cloud computing is in a hosted sources on a cloud so everything happens over the internet there is nothing you need to install something on your system so example take us oracle sql developer okay so if you are already working somewhere or the freshers who are here hearing it right so to access an oracle what happens is there is some tools or software tools provided by the oracle team and what that needs to be you need to install on your system so like how you install a notepad how you install a putty on your system or how you install a nfs game also right game is also one of the um, you know tool to a tool or a software provided by a company so you have to install install on your system so the drivers will interact with it and someone has to start maintaining that particular you know application so there will be a team to maintain that application right when that's all been replaced by this cloud so you don't need to install anything on your system okay everything is already available over a cloud that is cloud is doesn't mean that it's a real cloud so it's a, it's over the internet which connects to the you know at different places where the cloud service providers are onboarded it already okay so don't get confused here everything you can access on internet you no need to do anything from your side it's readily available for you to use it okay majorly what kind of services this cloud computing provides right so you can see here has a highlighted data storage okay where you want to store all your information or uh, you know company's information company's movement company's campaigns retails sales whatever information it could be belongs to a company or a personal right so they will provide the data storage where you can store all the information and next one is servers right so you want to compute something so you if example you take something like you know um you are working in a corporate world and you are working under a manager and manager ask you saying that okay let's see um uh, who and all been joined in our company from last 6 months okay so Six months data is already available at some place. That's called as a data storage already. Okay, 
so what happens servers why the servers what, how i can show to the manager right so what happens is manager when i ask ask me to show that particular data so what i'll do is i'll write a similar queries a small query saying that okay select all the customers all the uh, you know employees joined in this company where join date is less than 6 months right so then what happens automatically you have you need a something which connects your data storage and your on screen and something has to run in back end to get the data from a storage and show you to your on screen okay so that's where the servers will get utilized okay you can see here the internet line right so the internet line where all the servers or the routers will run on a server which connects your cloud and which connects your front end application so if i am working in a corporate world probably a laptop or a desktop where i'll run that so the compute resources runs all the servers will be onboarded at this line okay and databases i said as i said like databases is nothing but you have a data storage data storage you in a company there could be a many verticals example let's take a banking area where mortgage is there um, where it is a loan systems is there uh, where it is a card systems are there where it is a you know uh, mutual fund systems are there so this different kinds of databases you mean you need to segregate the data into your different places where it is easily access to you right so you can have a databases networking so everything runs on internet as i said you need to connect to the cloud so you need internet where it you can really able to connect to the internet and fetch all the resources or services okay and software as also over the net so what is software right example you need a putty on your system okay so you no need to install on your system putty also wherever the services you have example snowflake itself right snowflake provides a one of the cli command line interrupter is called as a snow sql where you can able to access it over internet itself or you go to the google cloud or you go to the aws everything have its own clis where you can access directly from the internet okay that kind of software as well right so the next point says that the data is stored on a physical servers are maintained by a cloud service provider so there is nothing you need to maintain here everything will be maintained by the cloud service providers who are the cloud service providers right majorly in the current um, you know situation i got the major are the you know um, aws uh, amazon web services gcp google cloud services or azure and we have oracle ocis as well and we have alibaba also and there are few other private cloud areas also there but majorly we call is a three service providers for now okay compute system resources especially data storage and compute power are available on demand okay that means what is on demand here right so what happens is there is a project is going to start okay so you need some extra resources to process the data and extra storage to store the data okay so in current world in on premise world what happens is if some project is going to come up what they do is they will start acquiring they start buying some you know resources or storage from a different companies or servers okay so what happens right so you you really doesn't sure that how much data is going to come but as a overall an idea what you'll do is so probably you are getting a 1 gb of data which needs just a 10 tb of space for you but what you don't know that it's going to be 1 tb or 10 tb and what you'll do is simply buy that okay buy 20 tb spending a 100 million amount on top of it okay but what happens is eventually you might not use the whole space but it's it's a waste of money in that cases right so comparing to the cloud what happens is you can acquire the space or a compute how much you needed for that moment of time okay so that my project is started so i'll try with a 1 tb of data okay if 1 tb is not sufficient in a seconds of matter i can increase it to 2 tb okay so if you see initially i had only 1 tb and later i moved to the 2 tb right so you been charged the point of time you been charged only to the 1 tb and later you started charging for the 2 tb okay that's where you can save a lot of money to the company that's where company can actually save a money and starts a new projects and really generates their revenue so these are all called the rgus okay revenue generating units and copt optimizations in the company okay so this all things will be provided by the cloud okay let's see real time example right so the day to day what we see in a current world and eventually everyone would have been experienced this right so the first example is google's email service provider that's called gmail so we all will have a gmail 
at other or some point at least we would have created a gmail to get an account into an insta or a facebook right so i we will be posting a lot right so so this email at least email address so what happens email there will be a lot of emails will be generating a lot of emails you will be getting from a third party or a instagram or a facebook or a different areas right where this all gets stored so there is hundreds and thousands millions of mails will be coming and rolling out they won't be having a no they can't even store this for a, you know simply like that creating a lot of servers and a lot of compute resources for that so what happened what came up with a google right google have a cloud storage okay where cloud storage you see you will get unlimited storage on a cloud where you have a google drive you can do or a google sheets you can do or a gmail is is everything is being um, landed or onboarded on a cloud that's that's the way the cloud works and it has the capacity to hold that much of information on a cloud okay so the you you as you are using a gmail right so you didn't even have a server for you you didn't even have any virtual desktop for you okay you are you are not installed any anything on your system right so what you do is you simply go to google and you type a google and you go in so what is a backend really working on right that's where the google do all this you know kind of cloud computing so you are not doing anything but cloud is providing google is providing all the resources for you okay that's what the google cloud computing happens right let's take another example i already touched up on this one facebook can store an infinite amount of information images videos on your profile they can be easily accessible from a multiple devices right so this is this is true so what happens is we will be maintaining you know two three mobiles on us okay so what happen you are not going to install anything on a, each mobile or a desktop right so what happens is you log in everything on a mobile or a, a desktop or a tab so all you do is you will install a facebook right so you are not going to install anything of uh, you know uh, any anything of any resources on your mobile or a tab okay so because it's on a cloud it can be accessed from anywhere okay that's the point i want to underline so data is on cloud so you can access it from the any place okay so that's where this on the cloud computing helps okay and then what happens so what next jump on to the next slide so let's understand what cloud offers really right so all the points has we discussed now the cloud offers right so first point says scale automatically okay regardless of a usage with a minimal contention so so what happens is you are you started getting a emails every day so you no need to go and increase your space or you are posting a 100 videos in a day you are you no need to go increase your space this scales automatically at a back end okay so there is nothing from your end has to be done okay are comparing to the other cloud areas right so as i said the cloud areas are providing by a multiple vendors Okay, so some vendors might need a very minimal contention. That means very minimal manual efforts from you saying that okay, increase to 10 dB or increase to 12 dB. Uh, okay, so so like that you 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 can increase it, but some cloud areas where you can directly go and automatically it scales based on the usage you are doing. Okay, next point, right? There is no hardware. Okay, either virtually or physically to select or install, configure or manage. Right? As I said, you have a Facebook. You just create an account and you are using it. If you think about what backend is happening, you didn't install any hardware. You didn't configure anything, or you are not managing day to day. Uh, seems like if the Facebook is down, you are not managing anything. It's all been provided by a Facebook. Right? So there is nothing from our end to do it. Okay. There is there is virtually no software to install, configure or manage. It says the same thing. So. either it is a virtual hardware or it's a software there is nothing you are doing it's a service is already available over internet you are just using it so it is providing all the availability is facilitating all the uh, uh, you know resources you need over a internet okay so the not last point says ongoing maintenance or a management or upgrades or tuning are handled by a snowflake okay this is particular to snowflake not only snowflake any cloud areas can provide this one okay so what happens maintenance right so think that if your snowflake is uh, very slow because of some servers or some disaster happened at particular reason okay some some floods are happened or all the servers is gone okay so you are not going to do any maintenance for that that's all will be taken care by the snowflake team or a cloud service providers team okay and management says that you want to increase the space or you want to increase the rack sizes okay we are not going to do anything so all they do it upgrades increasing the increasing the you know uh, update upgraded versions to the software 
or tuning it, right? So for speeder performance or anything, this all will be handled by the cloud services. Okay, so this is like a full fledged solution available over a service as a service over internet. Okay, so moving to the next slide. So what is data warehouse? So we understand now what is cloud and what is cloud offers for us and what is the databases evolution. Okay, so what is data warehouse? Snowflake is a cloud data warehouse we call, but we understand what is cloud and the next keywords is what is data warehouse. Right? So let's understand data warehouse. Okay, a data warehouse is a subject oriented, united, time variant and non volatile collection of data. Okay, let me put it into a simple terms. Okay. So what happened, right? So you have all the data. So example in this diagram, right hand side diagram, you could see that there is a source systems under reporting. Okay. CRM is a customer related management. Okay. So what happened? You have a company called X. Okay. That company is having a lot of third parties. Okay. Think that that company is a telephonic company. Okay. They are providing a broadband. They are providing a, you know, SIMs and data overnight or a television, everything they are providing, okay? So what happened is they want to store this data at a some place, okay? That place is nothing but a data warehouse we can call, okay? They are going to store all their history data or a, you know transactional data, so current data or last year data, day before, uh, you know, um, from last 10 years, 20 years, whenever the company has started, okay? And the new products they're going to introduce or their sales or they have started a campaign. So campaigns is nothing but, uh, you know, they are starting a new product where they want to get it into a, you know, get it into the areas where they want to sell it to the customers. So if you, before you're selling to the customers, right, you have to show demo to them, right? So that's something, a campaign. So we will explain the people saying that, uh, what is what, why you need to use, right? So like IATL or a different vendors which are doing, right? They also do a lot of campaigns outside, okay? So they want to store all this kind of data from a last few years, okay? That's where if you have a data handy, you can able to understand what's happening from eventually from month to month or a yearly to yearly basis, right? That's where you will get to know your business is really going good or it's going bad. Does it need any kinds of improvements or does it need any kind of new products to be released where we can service better to the customers, right? So the first point says, so United time variant, so wherever the time variants, so from um, 2021 or 2022, okay, a non-volatile collection of data. That means, so I'm, I, I'm going to have every snapshot of the data. So that means, right, what happens is 2021 customer X has bought a uh, broadband for a 20 rupees, okay. In 2022, the same customer has upgraded that for a 40 rupees. So now I have the two snapshots. So I can easily compare the data. So I can say that customer X in 2021, how much he has paid to the company, customer X for the 2022, how much data he has paid for me. So what I got a profit from that customer and what service I have provided, right? So you can able to understand every inch of a behavior of the customers, okay? So you once you have the data, right? So you can see source systems can be customer related inf information or inventory so if you have any old data or a referring data inventory payroll the payroll is nothing but a for employees if you are paying something you want to understand revenue is all minus of payrolls and everything right so uh, you payroll information sales i made a sales in this year this much the next year this much and the prediction is this much okay and general ledger this is generally what happens is general ledger is like what are the products we have what are the billing is being attached to it okay and production, what are all the production, productionized products are ongoing products, productionized how much profit I'm going to get, I'm getting now. And oncoming products, how much I'm going to predict and how many areas I'm going to roll out that product. Okay, so all this information, you're going to land it on a data warehouse. Okay, so data warehouse is extremely useful for the data analytics and data engineers will work on this data warehouse to get the data onboarded onto a data warehouse and then data analysts start consuming the data and they will make the business decisions right so every time business will come up with a decision and then what they will do is they will start create taking decision and releasing the products okay so that's where this data warehouse is not only a data analyst a data engineer so what's the role of data engineers they will bring all the source systems data into a data warehouse and data engineer um, analyst will pull the data from the data warehouse and creates all the reporting on top of it and sending to the you know executives or some campaigns teams to roll out the campaigns 
okay and data scientist where they want to do all the predictive analysis or the regressive analysis or whatever the analysis they want to do on the upcoming products or the ongoing products okay and ml and ai also can be done on top of the data warehouses where they if they want to run some kind of models they definitely need a data so for everything for every decision in this current world you need a data without data there is nothing there is a zero can be done right so we need a data so that we can able to service better to the customers from a company side okay so let's take a one one more example here okay for in, for instance in the world e-commerce okay c cart is there okay hopefully you know the c cart i just renamed it with the other name okay a data warehouse includes and maintains a data about products so we know that that c cart sells all kind of mobile phones dresses or uh, hair looms a lot of products okay customer login in credentials we we all will be logging into that c cart okay and we will be putting our address details inside that or my name my mobile number into that for a delivery purpose okay so what they do is they will start capturing each and every bit of information you have provided on that c cart okay so what they do with this all this right so what they will start getting a behavior of the customer if you know that whenever you log in into this e-commerce sites on a, uh, on a on a on a website so what happens is whatever the things you already bought the relevant information so related information will start popping up if you bought a shirt with um, example uh, you know uh, blackberries or something right so they will start showing you blackberry other related information to you also so that you they will get your attention to buy and make the business right so that's where all the data will they will store at some place they need all the history right so the um, uh, they will have all the details with them to know the behavior behavior of the customer okay so in a warehouse all the information is combined and consolidated in a different tables such as companies can extract and analyze the data in an integrated manner right so what happens right so what happens you are into uh you are into some e-commerce e example take a c cart okay you bought a mobile okay next month you bought something called table you bought okay and next month you bought a clothing so what happened is you are the customer they will create a tables different tables a mobile tables a cust you know uh, or um, you know cloth tables or a furniture tables so what they will do is they will categorize this data and they will store it in a, a databases inside a data warehouse okay so that's a way they can able to understand the customer how many products he is interested in or based on the databases they will get to know how many people are interested buying a furniture from us right so this kind of segregation happens inside the databases okay this all happens when the designing part happens okay so when the design starts they we will start creating a tables which are related only to the furniture or only to the clothing or only to the mobiles etc etc okay so if they want to understand some kind of you know uh, behavior of the customer right so they want to under, they want to integrate this all sources so I, if a customer x has bought this three products so i want to understand this behavior what is he really trying to buy and what i can really show him later you know next time when he pops up on my screen what i can show that he can able to you know go and buy so he bought a table furniture okay next time what else i'll show you a table lamp okay what happens is okay so he bought a table a table lamp looks good so he thought that okay probably table lamp would be better on my table right so that's the business strategy they are trying to do okay that's a business strategy company wants to do and increase their revenue okay so this all helps the companies to improve their organization overall performance okay so and we can see the second diagram here right so there is a data sources and the orange box says that the data warehouse okay your managers so on top of it think that this is the snowflake um, screen okay multiple people will able to query the data they back end from back end the data warehouse data comes in where they can have an executive dashboard where he can see a business how it is running on a very high level operating an analytical reports so how currently business is running uh, what betterments it needs or what is the statistics of each country or each state or each area is really generating a revenue for the company or okay or uh, you know uh, creating interactive queries for a reporting okay developers roles okay so or who is into you know very high level looks right who exports the data into excel and he creates some kind of other data analytics and show it to the teams to you know come up with some decisions okay so this is data warehouse so data warehouse is we can say it's a bottom of every 
every i could say every technology or every kind of company okay so they need a data they want to store it at some place that's nothing but a data warehouse to make any decisions on top of it you can have a multiple tools okay that could be anything in the world like a python or a java there are multiple things so this all can be you know accommodated in a snowflake also we'll discuss in a further slides as well okay so and let's and let's discuss little bit about technology changes technology is changing from day to day you sleep today night and tomorrow you wake up you will see a different technology pops up on your screen saying that someone has introduced okay that's what even sundar vijay says right so he always cares about you know who is going to invent what from a which room right that's where the evolution starts okay how we use the data here right so we see three three verticals like i called it here so one is di diversification of a analytics so analytics are diversifying day to day okay if you remember a few months back or a few years back probably not months okay so what happened is uh, in few years back uh, as a as a airport or a, or a flight bookings right so what happened is everyone would have been known that how many flights are been flying from here and how many people are been flying from here okay so but what happened eventually now right the customer they are trying to understand where exactly they want to go which stops they want to do okay are a particular person how many times he has logged in into his website and how many which are the places he's actually been to okay there are a lot of diversification happening so what happens is now if you see if you log in into a uh, flight booking site so what happened is you are getting a cab hotels a lot of things they are getting integrated so they diversified the way of they are analyzing uh, so they are doing analysis on a particular behavior okay it's growing day to day everywhere and for everyone we can call okay and explosion of a data right so now the explosion has happened the sources has become a lot of sources in the current world so it could be iot internet of things you you install a webcam on your screen a webcam in your home or a shop or somewhere where you want to store a data yes you need to store a data where that kind of data is also raw data we we are capturing and mobile information all your facebook information instagram or it could be anything right so we are going to capture that data also right so this all data will bring us into a, you know new insights and an opportunities okay types of data we know paracure json or csv excel so there are different types of data also we have in this current world okay and rise of the cloud so we discussed about already the cloud the cloud is currently booming area and it already boomed i could say um now everyone is even you think about the power bi or they think about the different third party tools fitran or something everything is available over a cloud now so you no need to install some stuff right so everyone is started depending on the cloud cloud gives us the ability to scale and centralize the data as well so you can ramp up your speed or you want to get a quicker results you want to produce some quicker outputs so you can do everything on a cloud with the how much speed you want to do it on a cloud or required for your project or a requirement okay and data is centralized okay it's not like you know um, i have my data in the mumbai servers where no other people can able to access it it's on a cloud so you log your data in mumbai over internet the person is in uk or a us in a, you know everywhere in the netherlands or anywhere they can access that's where the you know google cloud or a cloud is service providers will provide a feasibility to access the data so moving to the next slide So let's understand history. We all talking about Snowflake, and we are here for the agenda of, of you know Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse, right? So let's understand what is the history and why we call it as a Snowflake. It sounds sounds a little weird of Snowflake. Or we can say whoever loves the snow, they like the snow, you know, Snowflake, right? So let's understand a bit of history here, right? They founded it in 2012. Okay, they founded it in 2012, and officially they launched in 2014. So what happened this two years, right? So there is a steel mode, the steel period they call it. Okay, that means any new startup comes before coming public, they will keep it on a you know very secure, and they will start testing it, and uh, they will see the you know uh, productivity of it. So it gone into the two years for the steel mode. um actually the snowflake starts hearing in the world from 2016 or 17 i could say and companies also started you know realizing the power of snowflake is providing okay so officially we can call from the last 6 years there is a lot of boom and a lot of adoption from the snowflake and the revenue has you know exponentially grown we will discuss that in the further slides okay snowflake founder started from scratch and built a data platform that could couple of immense power of the cloud right so snowflake 
founders they are also from you know data warehousing concept background in the past and they came up they, they built it from the scratch actually they didn't adopt it from any other data warehouses or you know uh, databases they built it from the scratch and they what they do is they taken the advantage of the cloud okay and they integrated their snowflake technology on top of this cloud and they started serving as a service okay so that's where with this cloud integrating snowflakes is boomed like anything and it started fitting into the every requirement and in every country every you know project as well okay so but their vision didn't stop there okay they didn't stop just building that uh, you know snowflake one right from scratch what they did is they engineered snowflake to cover the data cloud where thousands of organizations are seamlessly access to the explore share and unlock the true value of the data right so you have a lot of data with you okay if you don't have the feasibilities or i can call it as a tools it's not inside a tools out uh, it's a tools doesn't mean that outside tools tools inside a snowflake okay if you don't have really some you know very special functions or a very special ui if you are not providing that definitely you can't explore your all of your data say is that i have a garbage of data somewhere okay i, I have a garbage of um, things somewhere okay you do if you don't have a plan or if you don't have a tools like i don't have a jcb or i, I don't have a hand climbers or something where you can't segregate that garbage and get out of get good out of it and throw the bad right so that's where the snowflake also came in so they have built a inbuilt tools or a functions where you can put your data and you can go insights of your data understand what is good for the company and what is bad for the company okay if it is bad for the company just remove it and save a storage cost over there you can spend that money on a different projects where you can actually gain a lot of revenue on top of it okay that's a lot of tools we will discuss further what the snowflake has been really provided for now okay and snowflake is a cloud database warehouse we all know by this time we all know that's a cloud database warehouse and founded by a three data warehousing experts okay this the three names are here okay and just a six year later right so as i said 2014 to 2020 where they were really not into um, you know world and the company started uh, you know uh, seeing that what is the power of a snowflake adopting into their uh, companies right the company raised a massive 450 million venture capital capital investment in the 450 million is something beyond the expectations they have right so they got a capital investment they they other companies started um, you know seeing the value of the snowflake and they provided you know yeah we invest in your company you grow with you we also will grow okay with that investment the company valued is a 3.5 billion okay snowflake is also having a stocks in the company you know us nasdaq and it is it is selling at a very good price and it is going up okay so that's where the snowflake is there snowflake is actually very fastly adopting by the companies and there are a lot of openings running on it you know companies and a lot of companies has already seen the you know the power of, the power of the snowflake where they can have a single solution one view okay you would have heard this uh, if you are experienced in any it area so you would have heard this keyword called as a one view one view is nothing but they want to see everything at a one place okay they don't want to juggle that i use a oracle somewhere postgres somewhere or hadoop somewhere i need all to be at a one place where that i can have my whole vision at a one place i can explore my data and i can make revenue out of it right so that's where the snowflake stands okay despite a long tradition of the technology companies having a non tech names right like apple so we know that it's not technical apple is not a technical definitely so google google is also not technical really there is something behind the google okay i forget that uh, amazon is also amazon is a forest name right like that even snowflake doesn't have any marketing team to come up with a name called as a snowflake fancy name right so what they they love of you know show on a snow and a skiing skiing is you know we do all the skate, skating kind of skiing on snow right so their interest and the love on the snow and skiing, they came up with a name called as a snowflake. Okay, I know it sounds a little funny, but word at least the word heard very nice, right? So at the last point, right? So this is in this slide. In less than a decade, it's not even a ten years for now. Okay, so any any product you release in the you know in the market, it takes a lot of time, right? So Google is there from I think before I born. Right, so it's almost there from 30, 40 years. Amazon is there from a very long period. Okay. So Snowflake, less than a decade. Okay, Snowflake has become a global force to help mobilize the world's data. 
right? So a lot of companies, a lot of countries are adopted already and adopting and they are doing a lot of POCs and they are running a lot of demos. They are they're having a lot of petabytes of data in the Snowflake. So they already mobilized the world's data for a lot of other companies. We will see the stats in the further slides, okay? So what is Snowflake? So we discussed about cloud computing and what is what is cloud, what is data warehouse and what it offers and who invented Snowflake and what was the, from where they started, right? So now understand what is a Snowflake, okay? So Snowflake is a cloud-based data platform provided as a SaaS. SaaS is nothing but a software as a service solution. So there is nothing to install or nothing to hardware to install or you need to maintain nothing, right? It's just a software as a service over internet. It is providing you login as like your Facebook, you log into Facebook and start utilizing the power of the Snowflake with all the analytical solutions or you want to build an ETL on top of it, anything you can build on top of it, right? So it's completely new SQL query engine. It's not like an on-premise where it goes to the table, fetch the data, scan the whole table. It, you don't need to do everything. They have their own mechanism here. They built from the scratch with a very optimized way and providing a very faster results in the Snowflake, right? So they built the new engine, SQL engine for the Snowflake, okay? As opposed to the traditional data warehouse offering, Snowflake is a tool natively designed for the public cloud, meaning it cannot run on an on-premise. Okay, you cannot run on on-premise this one, definitely it's on a cloud. So everything can be accessed over the internet. It can be accessed from anywhere and public clouds, majorly public clouds you can see in this diagram at the bottom, it is currently onboarded on a Google Cloud, AWS and Azure. These are the three major public clouds and all the companies are currently using. There is a minimum percentage of other cloud areas are also there, like OCI and Alibaba are there, but major of the companies, I could say 95%, 96% of the companies are in the world are using this, this majorly these three cloud service providers. Okay, You can't run it from an on-premise, but you can install your, uh, you know, Snow SQL and, uh, Snow SQL or a Snow site on your on-premise where you can connect to the Snowflake are all, or any ETL tools like Abini Show, Informatica, Data Stage, Talents, or any Python tools, or a Java tools, okay, or any Spark, anything able to connect. So Snowflake provides every kind of, uh, you know, connectors to this uh, uh, native tools. And are also already there is a lot of tools being built on the ETL tools as well, where you can directly give a credentials and connect to Snowflake and you can run the queries what you need. Okay, so where were we uh, and um, natively designed for public cloud? Okay, that we discussed. So it's already from the, everything is being installed in a cloud. Uh, if you want to use it from on premise, all the existing ETL tools are a Python or everything able to connect to the Snowflake. And Snowflake come up with came up with all the connectors already. It could be a Scala, Spark, or a Python, Java, anything enabled able to connect with the Snowflake. The, the platform provides a fast, flexible, and easy to use options for a data storage, processing, and analysis. Right. So this particular Snowflake, right? It is very easy. So I'll I'll walk through you to the uh, you know UI. It's very to use, and um, you know people who are very not familiar with SQL coding is very minimal coding is required. I could say coding is only needed when you are using a different tools like a Python or a Java or something. More of SQL commands is more than enough to you know run with the Snowflake and you can build advanced uh, functionalities are also on Snowflake, okay? And who are you know little not familiar with the Snowflake also, UI can provide some options you can directly create using the UI itself, okay? That kind of flexibility also we have on a Snowflake. Okay, I'll walk through that, how Snowflake UI will provide you, a, uh, you know, uh, the flexibility to create a tables or a databases or a schemas or something like that. Okay, and this platforms provided data storage, right? So data storage, it provides, so you could see this, all these databases coming up. So it could do, do a data engineering. So where you want to transform the data which you are receiving from the company. Example, you could say uh, the person who is from a UK uh, bought this product, okay? So he, let's put some kind of reward for him. So UK people will have some rewards or awards or India people will have some rewards or awards, okay? If you want to do that kind of data engineering, you can do that data transform directly on a snowflake, okay? Data lake, so it could be, if you example, you think that you are you are, you are going in a bike, now bike are becoming more smarter, right? So you have a navigation on top of it. So 
the your bike will connect to the internet and it will send that the way the person is really riding to okay that information i want to stay sure the you know uh, uh, store that data into my snowflake it's an unstructured data or a structured or whatever the data it is generating okay so that data also i can have it could be a structure or an unstructured data i can have it in a data lake snowflake supports it okay data warehousing as i explained in a previous slide yes data warehousing you can name data science people able to you know have the, any kind of unstructured data or a data they can semi structured data they can able to query and they can run their predictive analysis on it or data applications right so data applications what happens there is a html page and there is a java code um, so if you want to bring the data up on your front end screen so you can use snowflake as a back end data warehouse you can have the data and the data will be stored in the data warehouse oh. like and your front end can able to pop up uh -huh. that okay and data exchanges as well right so you want to give some data to some other executives or somewhere okay so uh, resuming the from the point i stopped right so initially right initially this snowflake has been built on top of aws okay so at the early stages 2012 to 2014 16 it was majorly onto an aws because aws was one of the first cloud service provider we have in uh, you know in this current world and then later gcp came in and microsoft azure came in and all other oci or alibaba has been into the markets okay so they started with aws and snowflake is also available on a google cloud now microsoft azure okay so it's a cloud agnostic Uh, you know uh, solution the snowflake is currently providing okay so we could see on this diagram there is a multiple data sources it could be a oltp oracle you know any other constraint checks constraint databases okay or any other applications like iot servicing providers or telephony companies or health sectors or education sectors any any applications which are running okay or third party tools who are running a campaigns for a different teams or who are really generating a data from the different companies any kind of data snowflake able to adopt and store it itself and provide that analytics on top of it okay so data consumers also on a right side you can see data monetization you can do or you can do your operational reporting where you can connect your power bi with the snowflake you can generate your operational operational reporting or adac analysis if you want to do you can run a sql queries directly on a snowflake you can understand and real time analytics also snowflake provides a real time that's you know you could you could not see with the other cloud areas or the on premises where there is an, a functionality or a service called as a snowpipe where real time data is available for your analytics okay that's a streaming process also can be done okay so moving on to the next slide how snowflake is different right so we 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 do have a competitors like a you know a bigquery or a redshift or a uh, you know azure data breaks okay how snowflake is different from all that okay or a on premise comparing to the on premises also we have right single place for all data so what is single date from all data right so you think that um, as i as i said a keyword called as you know um, one view right so the customer is very much interested to see all data in a one place so that he can have a very good connectivity to that uh, play, uh, to that uh, you know data warehouse or to that tool uh, where he can explore a lot of things instead of buying a different products and maintaining it and maintaining other teams also right it's a overhead activity to the everyone so to maintain that single place snowflake is a one of the best solution to have it and also right snowflake provides you know it, it has an ability to create a single source of truth okay what is single source of truth is or nothing but uh, if whoever is the downstream are their analytical teams or whoever it is who want to access the data right it's a one place where they can find every inch of data right it could be a structure or it could be a semi structured data or anything it could be okay and also snowflake how it differentiate you know what is the main differentiator for this is you know it has an ability to have unlimited number of concurrent users okay and applications also okay without impacting any performance so that means any number of in on premise if there are 100 customers onboarded suddenly that what will happen is there is lot of concurrency issues happens and table locks will go okay this all can be avoided in a snowflake right and it has unlimited unlimited facility it is going to create okay the based on the you know the underlying architecture the snowflake is providing we'll discuss that that whatever the unique architecture i mentioned so i'll mention a couple of points about that also okay so the next one says uh, scale and concurrency okay so if you if you as you think that there is a uh, number of users going to increase i'm going to onboard a, i'm recruiting a 100 new people employees and i'm going to get a big project 
okay so you want to have a storage that's nothing but a scale you can scale in a minutes or you can scale in a seconds okay and uh, there is nothing you need to do manually scale is automatically can be done and concurrency is also automatically managed by a snowflake you don't need any extra team to manage it or you don't need any kind of manual activity to be done from your side so snowflake provides a scale and concurrency with immediate actions okay and zero management right so what is zero management right so snowflake has been delivered as a data where data warehouse as a service okay so there is nothing you need to install or a hardware to be provisioned here and you don't need any you know or a teams in your company to manage like a dbas or it teams you don't need those teams also to manage you can save a lot of money and we know the data the dbas availability of dbas is very difficult in this times right on premises wherever the country wherever the company is having on premises databases right there will be a lot of dba teams or it services team or a server management team this all has to work you have to spend a fortune on that companies on the teams right so all that money you can use it on producing in other products or you know using for a different data or you know adopting the new customers to the company right so there is zero management you don't need to do anything okay even scaling or increasing the virtual warehouses or new features are upgraded everything will be able to handle by a snowflake okay there is a zero management to be done from our side it's like Yeah, readily available solution to use. Okay, next one is instant and live data sharing. Okay, data sharing is one of the great features Snowflake is having, right? So it has the capability to easily and securely share the consistent and governed use of data. Okay, so securely in sense, so while you're transferring the data from one place to another place, one account to another account, there is a lot of hacks happened and in between the data go lost, right? So Snowflake has a lot of SOC one, SOC two, or different kinds of security levels where it is able to handle very securely. Okay, and governance also been handled. That means like if you have if you are working for a health sector or if you are working for an education sector or if you are working for a some kind of you know company uh, government sectors where you have to follow some security rules, right? All these kind of certified. Uh, certifications all are already been passed to snowflake and they follow the rules while they're transferring the data and they maintain the pia personal identification information or a card information or a health information so all this also can be implemented or already been certified by, uh, certified to a snowflake okay in instant data right so there is some data creating and you want to show it in a different uh, you know place where example thing that in a company developers are there and testers are there okay they want it same table with a different data or a replicating data okay so you can clone the data and you can provide some data to the testing team and some data to so other other data to the development team where the two teams can work parallelly and your cost of that money is only costed for the one team that means you saved a 10 tb and you are not going to pay for the 20 tb You're going to pay only for the 10 tb okay that's kind of beautiful uh, features has been provided by the snowflake okay so all these features where it comes right there is a unique architecture produced by a snowflake okay that's what you see at the bottom right the multi cluster shared data okay so what it means either on premises or some other cloud areas what happens it is either it is a shared nothing architecture or either it is shared architecture but snowflake provides a hybrid architecture that's a multi cluster shared data that means every compute that means every resource running will have an access to the databases okay so you query 100 query you have filed 100 queries to fetch the data from a 100 tables what happens is immediately it will up all the resources and each resource will take its own power and it will hit the databases and it fetch the results as fast as possible and show it on your all screen okay so that's where the arc this architecture will produce the results very quick and very efficient okay so this architecture we will be discussing uh, you know in coming sessions we will be discussing this more detail how really it's powerful and how can you play with it and reduce the cost to the company and you can really modulate and you can able to measure that what queries needs what kind of power as well okay moving on to the next slide real world use cases right so snowflake in current world it is using for a reporting segmentations or interactive dashboards where the companies want to discuss with executives and all okay so are are a continuous loading so where there is a mobile data or a facebook or instagram they want to have this continuous 
data to be stored in a snow uh, or some data warehouses where they want to run analytics okay right so you can have a continuous loading into your snowflake or etl and maintenance so we have we have to generate some analytical reports on a daily basis or a weekly basis or a monthly basis running some etls right so this all can be done with a snowflake okay so you could see here the virtual warehouses right you can create this virtual warehouses is nothing but the power you are going to give to the particular segmentation or a particular uh, you know team you can call okay saying that there is a development team development team they don't need much power on this one so we need to save little cost over there what we'll do is two developers are there we'll create a small warehouse with the two uh, x small or x large okay so we will ask them to use only this particular warehouse so what happens is they will be started running with this warehouse they are very limited uh, speed we are going to give it so the, the speed where we can increase there is interactive dashboards are creating it's like a business decision has to take based on that results okay for them what we will do is we will give 5x large okay it's like a huge warehouse so you don't need to you don't need to do anything physically over here all you need to do is you need to just select that for this particular team i'm going to assign this 5x large okay so that company will able to fetch the data from this databases in a fraction of seconds so that they can run their kpis and dashboards and present to the executives okay like that you can play and you can assign it to the different teams you can do a lot of cost optimization here and you, it's very transparent that what you are going to use here and you can easily predict that what is going to cost for this your company or what's going to cost for the particular team okay so currently right so in this the prod dbs are snowflakes right so we have a lot of data so i could say uh, you know in my, in the current project i worked really recently or in the past right so we have a 4 trillion of rows and 3 plus petabyte right, of raw data and we have a 8x of compression ratio we have and 25 million micro partitions has created okay there is nothing we create a partitions this all will be handled by a snowflake internally we will further discuss that uh, micro partitions in a company sessions and how this micro partitions really helps to fetch the data very quickly as well okay so moving on to the next slide okay so we'll take one example okay one example in the current world, Capital Bank, Capital One is a one of the you know leading bank in the US. Okay, they have, it's it's a it's a case study which been picked from a Snowflake website itself, where Capital One directly has explained that what problems they had and how they overcome with the Snowflake. Okay, so what happened is they they don't have unlimited concurrency. So what it means is massive concurrency across dozens of business units. Database performance are strained to the maximum slowing analysis times and limiting data to the few. So what happened is chapter one is a bank. As I said, bank will have a lot of departments and the data is restored at a one place. What happened is loan session team from 10 people, from Mortica session team, 10 people, or from a card session team, 10 people. They started everyone querying the same table at the same time. Okay. There is a lot of concurrency happens on a table. So table, the way, you know, in the way inside the underlying architecture will get confused to whom the query, the data I need to send it to, okay? Or to which query I need to take it as a priority to run on this database. Or there is a query already filed on a table, it locks that particular rows or a table. It will make the other queries and other departments to wait the table is being free, okay? So this kind of issue they had, that is one of the issue. And second thing is fast elasticity. Okay, what it means is that they, they have onboarded a lot of new new projects and new products. What happened is they couldn't able to bump up the data, bump up the storage very quickly. Okay, they had that kind of issue. Okay, they couldn't able to meet the analytics for the business. Okay, or they want to upgrade the on-premise database data warehouses. Okay, in that system, what you want to upgrade some on-premise databases or on-premise tools, you need some downtime there, right? But Snowflake doesn't need any kind of downtime. Okay, so what happened is, they, they 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 had faced this issue of downtime and uh, you know um, they couldn't able to uh, you know uh, do anything at that particular time when the upgradation is happening okay and unable to innovate and scale due to the complexity so on premise is something very complex the servers will be at, at one end um, your it team has to come up with a plan that how they are going to bump it up and how many resources they want to buy in or how many servers they want to install. So this all is going to take a very complex city and take time taking tasks, okay? Capital Bank, Capital One had all these kind of issues where they are literally losing a business, right? So what happened when they adopted the Snowflake, right? So Capital One has Snowflake impact. 
what impact they had unlimited concurrency as i said users are a, it could be a concurrent users or concurrent storage everything can be bumped up on fly or automatically when you using the snowflake based on the use you have okay that means you have stored a 10 gb of data till today you will be charged only for the 10 gb tomorrow you go on for a 20 gb then you will be charged only to the 20 gb okay it's not like you are going to have 20 gb or you will predict that you will have 100 gb and they will start charging 100 gb upfront for you okay so unlimited concurrency fast elasticity so there is no bounds for the storage or something easily you can bump it up the either computes or either storage anything you can bump it up so fast elasticity we had and performance and access always remains consistent okay high availability that means any there is no downtime for the snowflake everything will be runs on a servers in the back end cloud and snowflake team a 24 bar 7 they'll have a monitor and they will start doing upgradations to get the best and best results all the times okay and comprehensive security snowflake is been securitized with a lot of certifications kind of soc 1 soc 2 soc types and hip health information card information personal information gdpr rules okay there are a lot of security rules are already provided so capital one utilized all the advantages they have with the snowflake and they started getting a more revenue using it and abandoning that whatever the on premise they have okay. it's a one experience one one of the biggest client um, experience they have with the snowflake okay moving to the next slide so snowflake modernized architecture offering right so what this modernized architecture is offering snowflake right single source for all data regardless of the data type it could be a semi structured data or a structured data it coming from a you know mobile it's coming from a facebook or any type of data snowflake able to store it okay available worldwide okay so it's it you can access it from the anywhere in the world over a network you don't need your system to be carried there or your laptop to be carried there all you need is your credentials created for you and you can access it from any point or any corner of the world okay separate compute and storage so this is one benefit we discussed right so in the current world uh, on premise if you want to increase the storage you will increase the compute also to support that okay in snowflake it's your wish if you want to increase only the storage pay for that yeah go for storage or you want only the speed to be increased you can just go for the compute and save the money at the storage level so you can play with the compute or the storage there okay elastically scales compute so you want to make it speed to more speed or excel speed or a super speed or ultra speed everything can be done at your compute level okay and the money you are going to pay you are going to pay only you have used there is no upfront cost okay you are storing 10 gb pay only for 10 gb okay and always available metadata snowflake maintains your metadata while listening for work to do okay so whatever work you are doing on a snowflake right it will capture into its metadata and it will able to provide you a saying that okay this query you already been executed okay you fetch the results from here it will be fast for you okay or this table is already created for you okay these are all the tables are there and this much compute you are using or this much billing you have so all this metadata snowflake will be giving you giving you on screen and it is very transparent and very easy to understand as well okay always available compute okay snowflake maintains a pool of instances ready to serve your queries okay as we dis just discussed in a previous slide that multi cluster shared data right so it provides you a plenty of resources there is no wait time for you okay so what it happen is every resource every time will be available to run your query to fetch the results from database and produce the output what you are required okay moving to the next slide legacy data landscape here right so this is the current landscape you can see in a, you know in on premises or you know legacy uh, you know are are old old like in old types of um, etls which are running right so data sources could be anything oltp databases enterprise third party or different places you will have a etl tool like informatica or an abinisho talent or something okay so what happens is uh, from i think probably before past 5 years or something right so everyone every company started okay they will put enterprise data warehouse where they store all the structured data okay or a transactional data that means every transaction if you are withdrawing money right every transaction is going to capture here or 
they if they are getting some unstructured data or they are going to get a very huge amount of data okay so what they do is they will uh, go with the hadoop okay having a data lake where they can able to store the semi structured data as well like a json or a packet or something like that okay so see company has to maintain the two data warehouses here so that means two teams two dba teams has to be interested on this and two softwares or two tools you have to pay so there is a lot of maintenance is needed for the two teams okay and then out of the edw they create a lot of data marts in a different areas like you know edw is on an oracle and data marts they might have created in a netiza and data like the semi structured data they would have been built on a hadoop so that then they have to maintain a lot of tools and lot of money like lot of licensing things they have to handle they have to pay a lot of different companies for example oracle they need to pay or a hadoop the hortonworks they have to pay and data marts that is a team the agility team they have to pay but a lot of teams needs involvement here when you're discussing with the different companies and coming licensing parts and everything right so all this been resolved by a snowflake okay let's see in next slide how it has been resolved right so you see here all the etl work edw and the data lake hadoop and logical data marts is able to done in a snowflake that means everything is going to bring up is bring up into a single space or a single layer okay you talk to snowflake snowflake have all kind of feasibilities you store any kind of data whatever you stored you pay for that okay you deal with one company you don't need a dba teams or it teams you don't need a licensing licensing is just needed at a one point of time or you can extend it going forward that doesn't need you didn't need an extra teams or you don't need a lot of bigger team to manage this you don't need an upgradations here you don't need to maintain zero administrations everything will be able to handle by a snowflake so we can literally see from this diagram to this diagram a lot of components is been able to facilitate inside the snowflake now okay this is what the company needs they need a one view they need a one place where they can able to invest money and explore their data and easy to go in right so bi analytics teams they can query the snowflake they can fetch the dashboards or they can run the analytical queries everything can be done at a one place okay this is a modernized landscape we have with the snowflake okay next one is snowflake console ui tour okay i'll quickly share um, how the, how the snowflake looks like the ui and how it what are the features so this is how the snowflake ui shows up to us when you are logging into it okay there is an you know fancy uh, login as well you, this looks as a little fancy you can do here as well so i'm i'm little familiar with the old a little old bunker stuff okay so this is the old console so you could see the so which cloud you have landed so i'm landed on aws amazon one okay you have a roles you could set the roles you have a databases or if you want to share data with someone you can share our marketplace and warehouses where you can increase the compute resources and everything you can do it here and worksheets where you can write all your sql queries to run it or you can do a lot of transformations you can do it okay and whatever you are executing as i said that whatever you do on a snowflake your snowflake metadata hears that and it will store that information okay so what it will do means it will have all the information what you executed here next time what you can do is you simply go into this and you can see what exactly the thing you have done and what time you have run what much time it has taken okay everything you can able to install or everything you can able to explore here okay sorry for the wrong okay so whoever the people who are so familiar with the sequels right they can write directly sequels here to generate at the databases tables or they want to do stored processes or any functional returns everything can be done here okay so or whoever is not familiar right so ui will provide a some feasibility who wants to create okay so from directly from ui itself you can create something like you want to create a database okay you just go into databases click um create so you mentioned that i want to create a database for the health sector okay i say that health sector database i need okay and come in saying that this is for health sector data okay so what happens right so you can simply create like this and snowflake is a uh, one step ahead it will show the sql also how it looks in back end what exactly it executes create database the database name we have mentioned and the comment is for like okay and then either you can select the sql run it on worksheets or simply what you can do is you can finish it off okay so you finish it off you can see immediately it is available for me okay and you can go inside this you can create a schema stable stages file formats and all so these are the lot of functionalities we have with the uh, snowflake 
real time functionalities or batch functionalities we have lot of things in this so but this all will be covered in the com yes, um, the course we are going to provide um, and uh, we will be providing a projects as well where you can learn this each and every feature of it okay. so moving back to the slides okay so where and all this snowflake is currently being used right the industry solutions where are the industries it is being used right so you could see there are multiple industries almost all the industries it's covered it could be a financial services or advertisement media or something healthcare technology public sectors and retail and cpg and education purposes as well so everywhere the snowflake solution have a uh, feasibility are able to fit in um to you know provide its services to get the you know best service out of it okay and proven by over 1000 plus customers right now there is a 1000 plus companies already adopted the snowflake and running the solutions on it right so we could see lot of companies lot of companies even this is the capital one we already discussed one of the case in atro i thought there are lot of big companies and fortune companies are already working on the snowflake and the solution is there uh, running on the snowflake okay so what is the current spot um, you know snowflake is capturing right so you know, there are a lot of other as i said there are competitors definitely data where competitors are many so where the currently snowflake is there right so currently snowflake from the last 6 years okay so what they have done they have a 6 12 percentage of customer roi roi is a nothing but a return on investment okay that means right so if i have invested a 60 rupees i have a 612 percentage on top of it that's what the benefit they got from when they invested on this snowflake that's the main motive of the other companies as well to adopt this snowflake and generate a spots or generate a opportunities for the freshers or could be who are upskilling their knowledge into a snowflake and that's why the opportunities are growing for the people right so company believed company started believing it and they we could see 612 percentage profits they are going to get when they compare with other databases or the databases they had already had in on premise right so from a last last you no know, total benefits more than 21 billion over 3 years according to the forster's total economy study right forster's is one of the you know public um, you know forum or a company which does this all kind of valuations so they are in, they are into very better position right now and they are growing exponentially and they grow exponentially a lot of the us companies so i could say that lot of us companies are already into snowflake and they are this their, their applications very very bigger applications are already running on it and it's a proven solution right now i could call okay 250 petabytes 250 petabytes is something like i can't even say the zeros of the top it right so that much of data is been already available and maintaining by a snowflake team so that we could we could easily trust the people right so they could able to maintain a 250 petabytes of data okay and you know if we read this right so data managed by the data cloud within more than 515 million data workload that runs on each day that means how many how how many you know data pipelines are a data you know processing uh, jobs are running on a snowflake right so to access this 250 gigabyte data and producing a faster results how much quick compute resources are snowflake is providing and there is no latency it is creating wherever there is a latency there is a delay in producing the results there is a trust will go and the results will go for less uh, you know less speed and the campaigns will less speed uh, mean will run in a, with less time and then this all delay to the you know this all will loss to the company so okay so that's where you could see there is an roi is 12 6 12 percentage means how much the companies are trusted the snowflake and how much they want to increase their space on a snowflake area where they want to increase the opportunities for the other people and recruit the other people okay currently there is a 1300 partners and counting snowflake have a currently 1300 partners and they are still counting Uh, it's spread it across different countries and different types of uh, you know uh, industries has been adopted this technology or or i could say this data warehouse okay for multiple reasons it could be for analytics or engineering or a data science or it could be a ml or a ai anything for everything okay so this is the stats we pulled it from the internet okay so this stats we could see right so from a snowflake in india okay what is the what is the capacity we have for the snowflake opportunities okay we could see currently okay at a right position we could see a 22580 opportunities the companies are looking for the candidates okay who doesn't uh, who are 
have to upskill there into a snowflake and easily find the opportunities in india okay so not only india as i said the snowflake is also the one of the big big, big country which adopted snowflake very aggressively and they already have a lot of snowflake uh, knowledge based in the uh, you know uh, to the employees or trainings they have done demos they have done and lot of workshop will runs in this, uh, you know uh, in us there are a lot of employee base already there in the snowflake still right so we could see 18000 plus snowflake jobs are available in the united states okay that's very huge number as i said there is already the technology base is already available still they are looking for the lot of resources that that proves or that says that how quick the snowflake is you know spreading across to the companies are uh, spreading across to the projects and how much this snowflake providing features are getting used by the companies okay so many other different country, countries are also adopted uh, snowflake like uk singapore is also exponentially growing uh, in the recent stats other apac countries or european countries are also started adopting the snowflake okay so we are going to provide a course details before um, i go into a course details i would like to walk through that uh, you know the page created for the course okay so we are ksr data vision we came up with a website where we are providing all the kind of notes or a blogs or the videos for the students okay so we are we have a blogs where the person who are with ksr data vision they can go into blogs currently we have published a five snowflake ones it is going to increase eventually before the course starts right so we have you can go through here and the videos are attached to this blogs all the information available here and even the whoever is preparing for the snowflake certification even that points is been added in this blogs eventually you'll get a great knowledge from this uh, you know um, blogs not only blogs you can have a videos as well where we have done a lot of videos you can add a videos into your profile you can start seeing this okay so a lot of videos are there some are free or some are paid so based on the course you are going to take so we are added in a um, very uh, efficient information on this uh, you know uh, videos and uh, provides a lot of insights on the how the current uh, world is adopting snowflakes or other technologies as well okay and also right so we are tied up with a red box red box is one of the hr consulting um, from india so they what this team will do is they will fulfill the vacancies and the fulfill the requirements of the other um, companies who are looking for the you know looking for the candidates so we will be very very tightly coupled with this um, company and uh, you know we will be rolling out our candidates to them to find the opportunities and uh, to roll out to the other companies where they can find opportunities and giving interviews as well okay so we are officially with um, a red box um, you know uh, as a plus uh, you know placement service providers to us okay and also right we have a lot of trainers and we we have a lot of uh, you know um, very good trained people so what we doing is we started taking a projects as well so rpm is rpm international is one of the company where we are providing our services to them company directly and we are delivering projects as well so whoever is taking a uh, you know uh, trainings are a course with us we'll try to fit in this areas wherever if it is possible and who are capable enough of doing this and who are uh, you know rapidly increase their knowledge at the areas okay so we do provide a uh, you know um, services to the rpm rpm international okay and also we are with the landmark landmark group so landmark group we majorly do a corporate trainings for them so for their employees we will uh, you know upskill their employees in a different technologies and we provide a project guidelines and the best practices to they can implement in their projects as well okay so these are the three major areas we are already tied up and uh, so uh, the whoever we are uh, people going to come up with us right so we will definitely show an opportunities at these places okay and we will make their life easy to identify the opportunities and getting into the company as soon as possible so going back to the uh, you know website so this is a ksr data vision website in this website so we will provide all the details blogs and the courses we will be providing here so um, resource uh, trainers are the people management will be available 24 bar 7 for you if you have any questions or any help or any kind of guidance you need how you want to progress in your life it could be a career or um, it could be you want to progress in a different technologies or something we they 
management and the dryness are 24 bar available. And we do have follow the WhatsApp groups for immediately re immediate response or helping a you know a resource um, you know to get very easy with whatever he is doing on his course. Okay, and the course details, right? So this coming back to the slides here, the course details for Snowflake, right? So we are going to provide a Snowflake training through hands-on labs, exercises, and multiple use cases and projects as well. So the real-time projects, we will show up the kind of a migrations or a, re, um, a streaming data or uh, analytics of data, okay? With more detailed exp explanations and um, um, using of the latest features providing by a Snowflake, okay? So we will be taking the, candidate from a basic level to an advanced level where he can able to put his knowledge and you know able to you know do all his own and gain a lot of knowledge at the snowflake area okay after completion of this snowflake certification training right certification or uh, you know course training okay learners will continue to be persisted with the ksr snowflake program through the included snowflake job search assistance we will be providing as i said with the red box or the different other companies where we are already providing our services okay and also we'll train the people providing a mock interviews to them um, how to behave at a uh, you know uh, interview level how how smart you can able to answer and how can you put your technical skills when you are interviewing as well okay so uh, tagging to the snowflake, we are going to provide a few other, um, you know, uh, additional um, courses as well, um, mostly on a SQL essential training or AWS services to integrate with the snowflake for data streaming and a loading. So kind of like a SQS, SMS, or uh, you're going to have a S3 and uh, how can you do use a Lambda to trigger the snowflake. So we will be touch, uh, touching upon few resources on AWS as well. And a click replicate is one of the, you know, uh, third party tool. You can replicate a data from any on-premise to snowflake. It's just like we will show how can you use and how quickly we can able to put the data into snowflake for analytical teams. Okay, and DBT architecture and integrating with the snowflake. DBT is also one of the third party tool which is booming up currently. And uh, we will show up how the architecture works. How can you integrate your Snowflake with other DBT? Okay. So with all this, um, you know, uh, technologies on a resume, the candidate can easily identify um, or easily can get a job in the current, um, you know, corporate world where the companies are eagerly and keenly waiting to have these candidates on their space, right? As we could see that numbers are into, you know, uh, thousands of opportunities we have in either India or US or different countries as well. Okay, so with this profile, uh, it's very easy to crack the interview um, based on the knowledge or the hands-on or the interest you're going to show in this one. And it'll make sure that you are being perfectly planned and perfectly trained and you are ready for cracking the interviews. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Um, I hope this session has um, enlightened or enhanced your knowledge on a uh, snowflake area. And it's very grateful to explain you all the stuff on a Snowflake and the career opportunities we have with the Snowflake. And uh, a sincere thanks from me. And uh, goodbye. See you. If you have anything to check on this one, uh, this address or the phone number you can contact. And all the best. Thank you.